Hey, Kit Gingas, Deva here with another exciting video. Today I have something different than usual uploads. This is our submission run for the Game Economist Challenge. You probably know the guy already since he's one of the biggest Monster Hunter YouTubers yet. Once in a while he makes cool challenges on his Discord server where you can either win money or a cool role. We obviously do it as a challenge for ourselves and I wish more people would host challenges like this to make the game a little bit more fun if you have nothing else to do. This time the challenger will to kill Safi Jiva on a full energy run by just using only Guide Palace weapons and full Guide Palace armor. Also Lemetal Ammo was banned so we couldn't just go with a light bowgun and spam weather ammo which would make the run pretty brain dead and easy. We know the weapons are very close to meta, but a weapon without a good build is just completely trash. So here was already the first struggle. Since we went with bow we had about 200% less damage in total if not more, which automatically makes our run 3 times slower than what it would be with actual optimized builds. Here is what the build misses which makes it so bad. 55% less elemental damage without true crit element, only 50% crit chance since we miss affinity skills and also no crit boost level 3 and only one level of fresh shot to known and no normal shot. And all that for 4 players is a massive damage decrease. On top of that we have a really buggy area 3 where multiple times in a run we had no rocks to hide behind and the nova just killed us the whole time near the end or really bad AI RNG. So I'm really proud of our team that not only managed to complete the challenge, but we actually managed to kill Safi Jiva in 50 minutes while having not even half of the damage we would have on a normal build. So yeah, GG's on that and shout out to my boys Terra, Dao and Lord and be sure to check out their YouTube channels which I'll link down in the description and check their perspective of the run if uploaded. I hope you all enjoyed the run and there is of course some mistakes and errors but on a 20 minute hunt it's impossible to go flawless especially with a damage nerf we had and just in a few hours. Okay so the first thing I did is uh, pick up rocks and then buff ourselves. We use different build on area 1 which contains only speed eating and blast coatings. And a really important role was uh, the position and the row we were joining the quest zone because depending on when you joined the quest, it will you, uh, the bird will drop you on a different spot. And we wanted the same guy to be tenderizing always, me closer to the leg so I can do the affinity booster down since our builds have only 50% affinity. Because the first area must be really fast and that's why the blast coatings. The 600 damage is so strong on the back legs that it flinches him so easily and our main goal was to push him as fast as possible to the natural wine trap which is why I'm getting tremored and the other guys we're basically risking all the damage and the spread shots for a quick run. So once he was in there I took the role of dropping the rocks and poisoning the monster because one poison is 2000 damage. And the rock timing is really tight because you have to shoot it down exactly on the moment when Safi Jiva is trying to get out. This for some reason cancels out the whole area 1. Like area 1 is almost if not damage dependent and not just... Maybe it's just a bug or a really smart move to just cancel the animation of here draining the first time energy. But however it changed cancels out the whole area 1 if you do enough damage. And then we of course go back to restock and switch to area 2 builds which is basically the same without the blast coating and the speed eating because we don't need it anymore. We just went for another DPS skill, I think we even went with spread shot or double crit boost. So once we are in area 2 we have the Glider Mantle, since it's one of the best mantles to fit more skills in, and we could fit in like normal and spread shot too. So I'm starting again with the poison as soon as the first poison we're out because on such 
bad builds with solo damage, 2000 damage is a lot and it's consistent. Like, you waste like 5 seconds to poison it and then have that five, uh, 2000 damage over time. So the guy with enmity should usually stay on the front, which uh, makes him get a little bit less damage, but allows us to get more damage on the back legs. Because bow is really dangerous. You are you have to be so close to the back legs, and you know he can just spam a splash move, which is mostly unavoidable because the area of the laser explosion is so huge that you actually can avoid it. But it didn't really matter much because we had three health boosts, so it was very unlikely to get one shot. But still, we have carted a lot of times to unavoidable lasers, especially on the big one, the big splash move where you just can't dodge it if you're under it. So on this area, I <laughs> it's the only run where I forgot the power coatings, which is not a big deal because I put them afterwards at the end on. Missed just about 30 power coatings, but that's legit like a 5 second waste, maybe. So yeah, the goal was to cancel out the first supernova. You know, if Safi Jiva tries to fly and you flash it, it will basically make him fall down like every other monster. And you can do that up to two times. The second time, of course, monsters don't fall down. They just keep floating and just slowly start flying down. This is also really hard to do because you usually get wind pressure, so you have to rely not uh, on other people as well if you're close. And that's why everyone equip flash pods, just to be safe, because mostly someone wouldn't get pre uh, wind pressure depending on where he sits at. So in, on area 2, if you basically cancel out the Nova two times, then she won't do it, she, she will skip it. She, he, I don't know what even Safijiba, it probably isn't it, since it's a baby with no gender, whatever. And here we basically got a mount, which is really easy to do with glider mantle, since you can just fly over the ledge and proc for mount hits. And this gave us a big CC to be able to skip the second Nova, because he usually does three Novas on this area. But if you over damage it quick, he will just do two Novas. And for some reason, the second Nova, basically the last Nova, doesn't matter if it's the second or the third, basically just the last Nova, it's not possible to cancel it. It's something like Ecliptic Meteor from Behemoth, he must do it. Even if you flash him, he will just keep doing it. Which happens a lot in Area 3. So, at this point, we just need to do a little bit more damage after the last Nova to make him move. And I realized on that spot that I don't have power coatings on. But yeah, the, the first area is like only one minute, and the second area is about five minutes, and that's it. That was the easiest part of the run. It wasn't very consistent due to RNG, like sometimes he just kept spamming splashing moves over and over. But we always check time after we the second area, so we know if it's a good run or not. And six minutes, or six minutes and ten seconds was basically perfect and the fastest we could get on there. So we're heading off back to the camp to restock all our items and of course switch to area 3 build just for the mantles, it's the same exact build. We have evasion and temporal except one guy has evasion and impact and that guy with the impact would go for paralysis and KO because uh, we have no space to fit in para paracoatings on our build, so he just put the paracoating jewel on his metal. And that AI is very unusual what Safi just did, like, as soon as you jump down you run. So I start again with a poison, which is the third poison on the run. Is it is it the third or the fourth? I don't know. Maybe. But there is one more coming later. The other guy had to help me with that. Era 3 is so AI dependent that, like, and it's a long run, so you really can't go for the AI. You just have to deal with getting bad luck at some point and just having to dodge it. What was really unusual is this. 
She flew and supernova without to be in critical state and this is basically impossible. This is never, I never seen this bug before. I've seen a lot of other bugs on this area, but never seen this one. However, we couldn't flash it anyways down because uh, you can only flash Safijiva two times and then there is a cooldown of... I don't wanna lie, I really don't know. It should be in five minutes at least. And then you can flash it again, but that's for all monsters. Like, all monsters you can flash just two times, or most of them. But Hazak you can flash only once, when the school is broken. And then you have to wait to be able to flash again. So here I dodged it, but we actually got wind pressure afterwards, so we still got hit from the lingering hitbox. Our main goal was to hit all the time the back legs, since they have... Uh, the best hit zone for ranged, but as well a really good elemental hit zone. But the tail is even better. The problem with the tail is it's not very easy accessible since it turns a lot. And also the guy with the enmity has always a really hard time on this. Because <laughs> as a bow player you, you, like, you can die so easily when you have enmity. So luckily we were able to flash it since... There was a 5 minutes cooldown from the flashes over. But as you can see, we are flashing it again. But she still stays up and <laughs> continues supernova. We, we really don't know anything about Safi. It's either a bug or a mechanic for unstoppable novas. But he's actually supposed to calm down again. Which is... Uh, that's what I said. Area 3 is really AI dependent to just cut time off or have a good run. But it's not only AI farming because on such a long run you have no chance to just reset till you get a good AI so you just keep going for constant runs and take what you can have and try to be as good as possible. So now we did the para since it's on critical state because we want all the CCs on critical state. She takes so much more damage on critical. And we usually wanted to go for the KO on the para, but it's hard to get with only one guy. So we decided to go for the KO later and save it after the sleep. So I got Amity here, I obviously did uh, the most damage for some reason, even though I suck much at bow. But yeah, the guy with Amity He's supposed to drag here to the traps just to not to just get the 1k damage but to get the first knockdown you know if, if you get Safi three times on the traps you get a knockdown I, I, I don't I don't know if it's two or three it's usually three but it has happened with two I'm not sure what causes it so I was already running to the second spot but Safi managed to fly up and does a supernova, which is not bad since it's almost not able to cancel it without like light bowgun when you can just shoot elemental ammo and reach it. Like with bow there is no way to reach it unless you flinch it before it even flies up to cancel the nova. The nova does not only waste a lot of time because of the animation, but also Safi Jiva loses the crit state which makes us automatically get way less damage so our goal was to interrupt here as much as possible to keep here on critical state we actually didn't manage to do that on this run there was some runs where we actually had way better area one and two and threes but we triple carted so much because of no rocks falling or other bullshit that's happening but yeah Safi is just a few weeks out or a month and of course it's a really buggy monster, the developers I'm sure are gonna work on it a lot. Finally have my temporal back so I can play a little bit more risky at this point. So now we have the third trap, which is a knockdown. I should maybe stay on the head, but I decided to just go to the tail since it's so much more damage. Maybe it was a better idea to be honest, yeah. So, at this point our hearts start beating really hard because it's getting tighter and tighter to get the run. 
and also more risky, risky because we are about to lose our temporals. So I'm trying here to get the KO, but obviously Safajiva needs so much KO damage to get KO'd, even though it was built up. So I decided to switch to sleep and get the KO afterwards. We really had not uh, like a hundred percent script since these builds and weapons together like are no optimal damage to be able to script the run or say okay we will start like this. So we just kind of anga banga. And now since we slept it, the other guy used the poison. That was the last poison we're gonna get on this run. And we KO'd it afterwards to get an even longer CC. And this is always getting closer to the end. The problem is we have no more flashes available. And we also run out of any kind of CC. The only way to stop Safi is now to either dunk it or wait for the flash cooldown to stop. I noticed his tail is on the trap so I just went to get that too. Which is... 1k damage is pretty nice. We were lucky with that flash because it was already uh, after the cooldown. But if he continues doing it like... Uh, there is unstoppable Novas for some reason. Like There is unstoppable Novas that you can... He will just keep doing it. Even though you dunk him many times. So this is a problem. I don't know... Is this a bug or not a bug? When he's schooled, you can see the school symbol on his uh, icon, which means it's about to die. And when it's about to die, it usually will just keep non-stop doing the Novas and not drop rocks. We had drops for this time, but so many other runs, he did like five times in a row after cancelling the Nova. So this, this is the last part. We are so focused here and just trying to kill it, just going full out. It doesn't matter if we die or not, we just have to kill it. And we managed to do it, obviously. So, yeah. That last 30 seconds, my heart was beating so fast. Because if there is no rocks or anything, you just have to kill it. That's the only way to manage to finish that area 4 without to triple card or anything like that. So at the end I'm showing the builds for all guys. We also recorded the fuse of all four guys, so no one is going to say, oh you used maybe the other guys used a different build with more damage. No, we 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 don't cheat like that. We want to do the challenge for ourselves, which is insane. Guile Palace weapons, like I said, are really nice, but it's all about the build. If the build if you miss like crit element, you miss 50% crit, you miss crit boost, you miss more road damage that you can get in the build like spread shot 2 and normal shots and comfort that makes so much different on a run so I don't want to flex but 15 minutes we tried hard for it we tried about 5 hours for this run and we had lost all hope because of the shitty area 3s with all the bad RNG and the bugs that just keep ruining really good runs but at the end, we were so glad that we got this run. So GG's on the boys. So yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. And I was skeptic about commentating it. But I think it's better to having someone explaining the steps or listening. Than watching a, basically a 15 minute run which with music. It will be just boring in my opinion. So I tried to cover it. I've never done before that. I, I've never commentated the run before. So yeah. Hope it was clear for everyone, and I really want to see competition, guys. If you're not in the Game Economy server or didn't start the challenge, be sure to join his Discord server. Be sure to join also my Discord server or our Discord server, it's not mine. We made it together with three other people. Also, be sure to leave a like and comment down below if you want to support me, my channel and my videos, and subscribe for more content. And with that said, I wish you all a nice day and happy hunting, guys.